just common sense things. Uh, when you defund the police, does should you be surprised when you get more crime? Uh, broadly speaking, no. I would expect a reduction in police funding to result in it would be associated with an increase in crime. Yeah, I think I think every American's there. When you don't prosecute bad guys, do you should you be surprised when you get more crime? Depending on the definition of bad guy, no. Certainly, I think uh, there are margins on which we could prosecute less, and there are margins on which we should probably prosecute more. But uh, particularly with the heinous, serious, or repeat offenders, if you decline to prosecute them, yeah. you should expect them to continue to do what they've been doing. When political leaders and leaders in the media uh, say that rioters and looters, people who destroy buildings, attack police officers, and take property, um, when, they're, when rioters and looters are called peaceful protesters, does that, should we be surprised if that leads to an increase in crime? Uh, I would be surprised if it led to sort of a large scale or longer run increase in crime. It certainly would contribute to sort of a decay in social norms. I think in the short run, it almost certainly uh, places pressure on civilian and uh, law enforcement authorities to spend less of their time and energy on responding to violence, responding to rioting, to sort of uh, to, to to give up a police precinct, for example, as happened in Seattle. Um, so, so certainly at the margins that can matter in well, some specific cases. Well, yeah, if police aren't going to respond and they're just going to let it happen, doesn't that send a message that probably can get away with that in the future as well? Sure, absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what happened in the entire summer of 2020. Uh, what about bail reform, you, the, 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 the left's uh, bail reform efforts? When you have that kind of bail reform, should you be surprised when you get more crime? A lot depends on what the bail reform does. You know, uh, ability to pay bail is not necessarily the best predictor of ability of risk of reoffending or risk of flight. Uh, moving away from cash bail is not totally crazy. That said, how you define design it matters a lot. If, as, for example, in New York State, Judges are unable to remand people on the basis of their risk to the community. That's a pretty poorly designed bail reform implementation, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, if you if you're erring against uh, keeping dangerous prisoners, dangerous offenders behind bars, that's a bad way to do it. Um, I guess I always come from you know the message is sent. So if if you're if you have fewer cops on the street, I don't I don't know how anyone could not conclude that's going to result in more crime. If you're if you're letting bad guys out, not having the the, the type of bail we've traditionally had. If you're not prosecuting violent criminals and, and other people who break the laws, if you're if you're telling people that you can take up to a thousand dollars in merchandise and not get uh, prosecuted for that, I don't know how that doesn't contribute to more crime. Yeah, I and 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 it almost certainly contributes. Uh, and 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 the question comes down to where it contributes and how it contributes. I think it is almost certainly the case. Uh, some jurisdictions in California have seen an increase in shoplifting. Some jurisdictions in California have not seen an increase in shoplifting. We tend to blame that either on progressive prosecution or on California's changes to the felony theft threshold. We see similar changes in other jurisdictions that do not lead to large increases in shoplifting. My suspicion is in that case, there's an intersection of factors that uh, prosecutorial strategies and the movement of the San Francisco PD and the lifting of the felony theft threshold all contribute to an environment in which shoplifting is uh, is, is yeah. easier to do. The cost of shoplifting are lower. Um, and I think it's an example of exactly what phenomenon you're talking about. If you uh, ratchet back the capacity of the criminal justice system, you should expect at the margins that the people who are most likely well, to offend will offend more. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I guess I always start from the premise. I, I don't, in my mind, bad guys aren't stupid. I mean, they're just bad. So if they, they if they if they see oh but we're not going to be prosecuted we can go shoplift and not be prosecuted. There are less cops on the street. Uh, we've been you know rioters and looters were called peaceful protesters in that environment. I don't know how that doesn't contribute to uh, more crime. And and that's exactly what we see. Isn't crime up in just about every major urban area, particularly violent crime? Uh, specifically violent crime. We also see large increases in motor vehicle theft. Um, other kinds of property offenses, although not all property offenses, but yes, in general. And by the way, it, it, those those kinds of offenses tell me specifically shootings and homicides is that it is concentrated among the most crime prone populations. Right, who it, are getting into beefs. Yeah, and and as Miss, I get back. Thank you. <laughs> 